Welcome to another episode of Your Stories. I'm Danny Fagan and this is my TMS journey. Um, today I have an interview with a very beautiful lady, Kinthia, and she is going to tell us about her um, diagnosis of lupus and she had chronic fatigue and skin issues and a bunch of other symptoms that we're going to find out about today. But she has made a brilliant recovery and um, she's got a lot of kind of different elements to her story that she's going to talk about, some diet related and some different kind of modalities that she followed that aren't necessarily the same as what I did. So I think it's really interesting to share those different kind of perspectives. So um, I'm going to let her in now and she can tell us her story herself. I hope I said her name right. It's Kintia. Kintia. <laughs> Hello, Kintia. Welcome. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. It's been a little while coming. I know we've been trying to do this for a few months. So um, yeah, I'm excited to hear your story. I just yes. um, gave a little bit of an intro into um, the diagnosis that you had and a little bit about the symptoms that you had. But I really would just love to hear it from your perspective. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just uh, taking us back a little bit and yeah. yeah, just start where you feel your story needs to kind of start and we'll just take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. So let me let me take you back to 2013. That's where it all started. Um, mm -hmm. So then, you know, you and your viewers can have a comparison in mind of what I went through, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so in 2013, I was diagnosed with lupus. And it was during the same time of my pregnancy. It was during my second trimester, you know. And okay. for for anyone who doesn't know what lupus is, it's um it's an autoimmune condition where um, for me, it was systemic. So lupus attacked almost every organ in my body, you know, like my heart, my lungs, my brain, my kidneys, my skins, my bone. So wow. um, I was pretty much um, like extremely sick, you know, like you can, I, I like to like kind of refer to uh, create an analogy where it's almost like a Trojan horse, you know, when it wants mm -hmm. to attack certain file it just keeps attacking and attacking and then everything shuts down right and it just right. malfunctions so for me in 2013 um my body was just in a completely total shutdown i it wouldn't cooperate with with me for with anything you know um you know like daily movement movements for me was debilitating you know i would mm. experience hip pain I couldn't walk. It was, I was limping. When I would walk up the steps, I would have to hold onto the railings, you know? Um, my kid, my doctor actually recommended that I get on uh, kidney dialysis because wow. kidneys were so bad. Um, lupus, that was actually the, or, the organ that kidneys, um, that lupus was attacking severely. So they suggested that. Um, they suggested that, you know, I don't go back to work, you know, and just, just, recover. Um, wow. So it was a lot going on for me because at that time I was also pregnant. So a lot of the, I guess the pregnancy symptoms were overlapping. So right. they couldn't really tell if it's a pregnancy or it's the lupus. So long story short, um, I end up, you know, giving birth um, prematurely and thank God she's healthy and, and well, everyone is well now. Mm -hmm. So you know, my journey with lupus was one of a roller coaster ride. You know, I went yeah. through a lot of highs and lows. Um, I can recall when um, there were many times when I would, I couldn't get up because the chronic fatigue, whatever, for some odd reason, would get to me, and I couldn't, I couldn't manage to get out of bed. You know, I couldn't brush my teeth because of the joint pain. You know, I couldn't move my fingers. And when you think of it from like a, a new mom perspective, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, yeah. how am I supposed to hold my baby, you know? For real. Yeah. So it was just, I was just at a really bad place. You know, I think at that time, lupus really took so much out of me. Um, it made me at one point in time suicidal. Like I just right. felt like, what's the point? I can't even take care of myself, let alone take care of this new child, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's I was in heavy. A really, it was really heavy for me. I was in a really dark place. I would get better, then go into a relapse, get better, get better physically, that is, right? 
Mm-hmm. But I now always fall back into like a relapse. And um, how I got better early on was um, I started to change what I was eating. That was actually the first thing that I started to do um, in which my husband had, um, you know, he was doing his research and he was saying, you know, let's just start with some smoothies. You know, let's start just drowning your body with green smoothie, you know, right. to heal your gut, right? And mm. I was very resistant. Like I was, I was just angry, you know, so angry. Like, why did it have to happen to me now, you know? So um, I was very resistant in, in the beginning of this journey. I didn't want to change my diet. I didn't want to do anything because I was so upset and, and angry that I had to go through this, you know? Right. And probably thinking as well, like, this is so terrifying and, and horrendous like how yeah. is green smoothies gonna sort me out how can i right. how can this be right yeah yes yeah so it was really this whole shift in my mindset i had to go through this thing where i either continue to probably get a little bit better and then fall back into a relapse mm. be functional but not be well enough for my my family for myself right. you know mm-hmm. and it was a decision that i had to make and um so I just got fed up. I got fed up. My I went through uh, three relapses. And the third one was the most traumatic one for me. That one was when um, prior to the third relapse, I had a miscarriage. Okay. So that was a lot because a, a week um, later, I went to a relapse. And when I found out that, oh, wow, this is actually real, that I just lost something so precious to me. Right. And that pretty much. Well, that's when I realized that, you know, something's got to change. Like, I need to take this more seriously. I can't just dabble, have one foot in and the other foot out. You know, it can't be 20, 20, 80, right? You got to go all in. It's like this yes. commitment. Yes. And I realized at that moment that that just that breakdown for me was my breakthrough because I knew that I had to change my perspective. I had to change how I was viewing all of this experience. Mm. And that's when I started creating a new possibility for myself. You know, I was very intentional. I started becoming to be intentional about what what I was doing, eating or saying, you know, I was very amazing. Yeah. Because I knew that, um, if I wanted to get better, I have to show up differently. You know, I had to get my mind right. I had to let go of this idea that this diagnosis is defines me. Right. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. And I've learned through my own just healing recovery and just through reading other people's story that, you know, um, when you allow any type of circumstances, especially something that's health related to define you or you internalize that, oh, you're going to be crippled forever. You're going to be sick yeah. forever. The mind will follow, right? The body right, will you follow believe the mind. That. Yeah, yes, right. yes. And then you, you get stuck in this victim mentality because that's what I was going through for the lot. When I got diagnosed in 2013, it took me about a good two years, two, two, and two plus years to realize that it was up here that I had to change. Mm. I had to get my mind right. I mean, I changed my diet. I mean, I was eating, I was doing well. And that was like my saving grace because I was eating well. I removed, you know, the inflammatory foods from my yeah. diet. I make sure that I eat whole organic and I make sure I, I cook my own foods and I, mm-hmm. I, I seldomly eat processed food. So that was very really great. And that's what helped me physically. It helped me get better. It helped me with my hip problem. It, start, it allowed me to walk and to just kind of go back to the gym and start moving again. But I realized it wasn't enough for me, you know, you know mm. drinking all the green smoothies and all that. It's great and all, you know, and eating <laughs> healthy is great. Right. But there are other factors, you know, you got to reduce your stress. Right. Yeah. Stress. Especially don't you think it's like really interesting as well. So talking about that, there's like that you, and this is kind of regressing a little bit to the other part of your story. And I don't want to interrupt your flow here, but it's just fun. It was really interesting that like you, and this kind of similar, similar thing happened to me that you, you know, you had your miscarriage and then you had that very sort of low part of your life, but that that rock bottom kind of almost pushed you into a surrender to this situation. Oh, yes, yes. Like and I to realized, change. yes, the change part, that was like, kind of like the needle in a haystack for me. Like I wanted to get better, but I wasn't willing to change. Right. Right. And it was just, just this, this, it was just pulling teeth. Like I didn't want to do it. I was just so resistant. And I think yeah. a lot of it has to do with, I was just so angry and resentful 
I mean, at that time for me, everything was going great. You know, like I was like doing well in my career and like, I was just doing great. And I found out I got pregnant. And then, Mm -hmm. then in my second trimester is like, what, what is this? You know? And it's just like, it just hit me left field. And I, I think a lot of it, I think what really aggravated the lupus symptoms even more between the 2013 to the two to three years later in 2015 and 16 was Mm -hmm. I just kept reverting back to that victim mentality. I was just very angry. I was just judging everything that wasn't right with me. Right. And when you understandably so though as well. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. because I was resentful and angry, you know, um, my body was expressing that in symptoms, you know, I continue to feel the joint pain, you know, the, um, the rashes, the hair loss, because I couldn't control what's up here. You know, mm. at that time, I didn't realize that, you know, y- how you think, you know, your, your perception about your external environment can alter your biology, your health. I didn't sure, know that. Yeah. Right. yeah, there's a neurochemistry, there's a change in your biology. I didn't know any of that, you know, and until I start taking a deeper look at this, you know, in the mind body connection and, you know, epigenetics and all these mm-hmm. other different branches of science. And I realized that, wow, this is a game changer, you know? You know, just by thought alone, especially if it's a stressful thought, yes. it induces a stress response, you know, yeah. you start to, to live out of this fight or flight survival mode. And that doesn't help when you're dealing with a, a chronic condition, right? I didn't Absolutely know. Absolutely not. Yeah. So, you know, I just feel that, um, I know I'm just kind of fast forwarding a little bit here, but I just That's kind okay. of, I think this is worth mentioning that, you know, when you hear other people's stories of recovery I think you should take note of that you know even though you have this very bleak uh prognosis that your doctors Mm -hmm. everyone is telling you you're not going to get better but I think you should use other people's healing story as an example to 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 say you know what it is possible Mm -hmm. because at one point you know everyone everyone I tell you everyone didn't think I was going to make it you know I yeah I, I bet Every time I would go into relapse, I would like hit this near death experience. The third one was the worst. The third one, the doctors actually said, just call all of, all of our family members. We don't know either. We can't tell. Wow. And, and to make this drastic change, meaning to be this well and this healthy today, I just wanted to kind of testify that it is possible. Yeah, it's incredible. It, yeah, you just have to change the way you're viewing things. And you have to learn that, you know, um, your, your, you know, your body shows symptoms through your reactions to your, your, your stressors, like what you're dealing with. And I think yeah. that was the biggest, biggest takeaway for me. Once I understand that premise that, you know, just by thought alone can do all of this to your body, I start to become more mindful and more intentional. Mm. And I make sure that every action I took would just built on and strengthened my biology, my health, you know, I just make sure I was this intentional. And uh, more importantly, you know, I still have a, a, a daughter, you know, who now is seven, you know, so <laughs> she needed her mommy, you know, and right, right. She was just my anchor, like she, yeah, what a motivator. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's how I just pretty much, you know, it starts with it, this, you know, I feel that I know it's, it's, it's a lot harder to, to kind of see that you can get better, especially when you're going through it, especially when you're in your symptoms and you're feeling it. But mm. you know, what I, 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 what I've learned is just to learn to reframe this, this diagnosis, this label that that's been put on you, you know, and just, right. yeah. And, and just and, see it as an experience. Right. And, and also like, I've heard many people say this in this circle as well, that like diagnosis is just a cluster of symptoms it's a name for a cluster of symptoms right so certainly in the mind body world like it's kind of got a bit of a gray fuzzy edge i suppose a diagnosis because yeah. depending on what you're diagnosed with obviously but it can be in in that sense a lot of things can be mind body or partly mind body or you know so how did that like I don't know that much about lupus. Um, I've, I've heard lupus mentioned um, on TMS Wiki and in some other TMS um, scenarios, but mm-hmm. do you think then that those symptoms that you're experiencing that were diagnosed as lupus were all mind-body or is that? Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's, um, 
it's um, a combination of, of mine and environmental, meaning like it's not just, it's, it's not just your emotion, there's not, there's not just an, an emotional aspect to it. I believe in my, in my, my journey that mm. it was also environmental as well. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say environmental, I I'm not just talking about like the toxins that we're kind of exposed to depending on what you're doing and where you're going. But I'm also talking about like things like what you put on your body, like the, you know, any body care, any, anything that you, um, and the people that you surround yourself with that in itself is stressful, right? Right. Taxing on the body, whatever it yes, is. Yes. Right. And I think at that time, um, where I was in my life and just leading up to where, to the, the pregnancy or to the diagnosis, um, I was just, what's that word? Um, I was experiencing a lot of resentment because of other personal challenges that I was going through. Mm -hmm. So I believe that, you know, it just took, it just, it only take, it would only take one thing just to, to, to give me this diagnosis to, for this diagnosis to happen. Because this, mm. at that time I was in a very stressful career, even though I love doing what I do, but it was really stressful. And, and mm -hmm. I think that added on stress from the stress of the work. And also I wasn't eating well, like I was just eating whatever like that I can put my hand to. Mm. And um, what really helped was I was always working out. And I think that helped a lot, but it wasn't enough and I wasn't getting enough rest. So mm. You know, I, I, for me, I believe that it's a combination of many factors. It, it could mm -hmm. be uh, not getting enough rest, not eating foods that are nourishing for your body. Stress is the big, I can say that in my story is stress, chronic stress. That's what it is. Right. It right, really right. just, all I need is just one thing. And then boom, you get hit with a diagnosis. And for me, it was the emotion of stress, you know? Agreed. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, that's what I can, I can say about lupus. I know for other people may be a little different. I mean, you know, I know studies have shown that, you know, about 10% is genetic predisposition, but the other 90% is environmental factors. So that makes you wonder, mm. right? Makes you wonder a lot that, ooh, if you understand this statistic, right, you can say that, you do have control because if only 10% is genetic, then hello, the other 90%, mm. you can do something about it. Right, know? right. And yeah. I've heard that a lot in mind body, um, in lots of recovering stories or, you know, in lots of people in this circle is like, if your family had chronic anxiety or mm. gut issues, or mm. I was listening to the self healer soundboard podcast the other day, the holistic psychologist one, and she was talking about her mum having really bad gut issues and anxiety as she was growing up. So she thought she'd inherited that genetically. Yeah. But if you think about it, like if you're constantly surrounded by someone who's massively anxious and you're raised in a massively anxious household and you're raised being taught that gut issues and tummy aches and all this kind of stuff, like we know that we, if we t think about someone else talking about symptoms, we can naturally just inherit the symptoms right there and then. Like if you were telling me you had a tummy ache now, I could probably get a tummy ache within 10 minutes. <laughs> right. And <laughs> you, you know, know, it's, it's so, it's so true that you brought that up because I, 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 I feel that this is like, you know, especially when you, when you're living with people who just keep repeating the same narrative over and over, you just yeah. start to take that on. You start to say, Oh my God. Yeah. I'm feeling anxious too. And it's like an, you, you start to, to, to take on that energy as well. It's like, right. like I, cause I know, you know, I growing up, I, there was a lot of anxiety going on in my household. You know, it's just mm. a lot of like, and so think about it as a child. I mean, I was taken on my nervous system was like, kind of like this. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So yeah. I was, I, and I think, and I can speak this from my own part, my own uh, story is that um, it was always chaotic for me growing up. So mm. think about it from a child perspective, you know, you, I'm now I'm going through life. My nervous system's like, like this in fear state, right? So yeah. I'm going through life in this, like, like always perceiving like threat, fight or flight, you know, and that's mm -hmm. another thing, you know? And I didn't know all of this. And so I started doing like, started doing more reading, researching and started kind of, kind of looking back at my own personal history and looking how I, how I was brought up, my childhood experiences, you know, yeah. all of these things, you know, correlates to um, what's happening right now. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I read a study, I forgot what, what the study was called, but it, it talked about people with chronic conditions most likely or more than likely have some sort of adverse um, childhood experience, ACE. Right, right. So yeah. Traumas that they held on, you know, it's just over time, 
just like me from my, in my experience that all I need is just another stressor to hit it. And then boom, you're diagnosed with this lupus, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like your, your body is trained to be in fight or flight throughout your childhood for whatever reason. Yes, and yeah. then that's your automatic, isn't it? That's your autopilot scenario. Right, like, right. Why wouldn't it be any different? It makes total sense. Right. Yeah. So where did like, when you got, you know, you were doing your research and finding these studies and stuff, like where did this, where did the recovery kind of start for you? Other than, you know, you implementing these changes in your diet and your health and stuff like yeah, that. You, where did the that, mind emotional work kind of start? Yeah. So know? that, that for me was when I had the miscarriage, this was mm -hmm. the third relapse. And that's when I realized that you know, oh, I really, really have to start make, I have to be committed to this. And it, it was that that moment, moment of this decision that really changed everything because I was, I felt it so deeply mm. in my heart when I say I'm never again, am I going to allow anyone to tell me how my life is going to be. So I took wow. it upon myself to, 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 take the actions in the past it was more like people were coming to me hey you got to do this oh you should eat this and that everyone's telling me how to live my life sure and I think when I lost when I had the miscarriage that's when everything changed that's when I realized like kind of like I reached this psychological threshold I hit it right there in my mind and I'm like enough is enough and then I just started being intentional I started saying you know what I'm gonna get better on my term Nice. And I was hungry for it because I miss being myself, you know? Right. I, I think you being... do. You do just get to a point, don't you, where you're like, right, fuck this now. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I was at that point. I was at the yeah. point where I was done. I didn't want to hear anyone else telling me, no, you're going to be sick. I didn't want to hear that. So I started right. and I was very just committed that I changed everything. Every, everyone was surprised. I started working out more. I started to just become more grateful as well. Amazing. Like that was a game changer in itself because the old me was very resentful. I was very just angry. But once I started to understand that, you know, this is something that is an experience. Lupus is just an experience. Just like giving birth is just an experience. Getting married mm. is just an experience. And when you start to look at life in this like frame of lens that you start to see that, okay, what do I have to learn from this experience? And I have, to, and I thank lupus actually. I thank it yeah. because, because of that experience, right? I love yes. that. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I say it with a smile because, because of that experience, I'm more, I'm more conscious now, more intentional with my way of being. I'm more intentional, intentional with what I feed my family, with what I feed my daughter, what I, what I bring into my life, you know, mm. because I, I make sure I'm a conscious consumer in other words. Right. Mm. And that has been just kind of like the foundation of how I've been able to stand strong, to stay healthy, despite of what's going on today. Right. Because I make sure that, you know, my health is my wealth. It's my bottom line. If I don't take care 100%. of myself. Mm. Yes. And if I don't do things that are going to uh, create the best health outcome for myself, I'll be back to, to square one, you know? And that's just something that I just kind of lean on it and in on day to day and you know don't get me wrong i still have days where i'm tired and i don't feel like doing things i have crap right days, you know that's yeah, just sure. human right yeah but i i also don't allow that to be the story you know i just yeah I'm just thankful that i made it through to the other side right when when people who have gone through some traumatic experience and they're able to get to the other side, they're just more grateful. They're, they just thank, they just more, they just thank God. I'm so glad that I, I'm able to breathe today because, yeah. you know, looking back, my story wasn't like that. My story was uh, very- It was almost over. Yes, yeah. it was very depressing. You yeah. know, my body was rejecting everything. I couldn't eat, eat anything because, yeah. you know, clearly my gut wasn't healthy, right? And all that. Yeah. And I would just, I would just react it's just a different thing now, you know? And totally just, different. Yeah, you're just more grateful now. You're just like, you know what? It's okay. Um, it could be worse. So it's kind of like that thing. Where like, oh, <laughs> could it could definitely be a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Considering yeah. what you went through, my yes, God. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just, I'm just grateful now, you know? Um, it's amazing. I, I think, yeah. And what I, did you I, go? So carry on, what, say what you're going to say. No, no, I was just going to say, you know, um, 
just allow yourself. And I think when we're going through things, like when we're going through some sort of health issues, we don't allow ourselves to enjoy, to have fun, to play, right? We don't allow these, yeah. these things to come into our life because we're so in our story. And I yeah. tell people, I know it's hard. I know it's challenging because I've been there. Yeah. But you have to still remember that while you're still going through it, you have a choice. Every moment is a choice for you to, 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 to do something that would stack the favor in your, in your stack the outcome in your favor, right? Love meaning, that. Like, meaning, should I just kind of eat something better than this? Like, whatever it may be, just sh try to shift your perspective about things. Mm. That's what really drove me home is getting my mind right. It's getting up here right. Because, you know, I was doing everything I could. I was doing uh, like a million modalities, but it was up here. Yeah. That, couldn't seem to get it right until the breakdown and until I started realizing like listen I have to be an active participant in my life you know everyone and their mom can tell me do this do this do that <laughs> doctor, you know but if I'm not gonna take it upon myself and be an active participant in my life nothing's gonna change I'm just gonna get better go into a relapse get better and go into a relapse you know it's right. like never ending healing loops you know and I just had enough. I think when you get to that point where you had enough, it's like- you The only way is up really. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's where I was. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's-, it's um, That's amazing. So what, just give me a little bit more detail of like how you went from being rock bottom to making these different choices. Like what was it that made you make those new choices? Did you learn some new stuff or were you kind of like- told to try a certain thing or like, or was yeah, it literally just like I, divine I, intervention? That I, I think a lot of it's a divine intervention. Um, that was kind of like what really, I think, drove me home and, and kind of like, if you want to call it, um, restore my, the blueprint of my health. But leading up to that, it was, I, I would just take note of how other people, um, we're getting better. Like, you know, meditation, I started doing meditation that really helped. Um, I started doing yoga. I started, mm -hmm. um, you know, journaling because I am one who I just kind of like shove my emotions down, <laughs> down my sleeve. You know, I just, I just, yeah, we're really good at that, them. aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were, so we I, were. <laughs> yeah, I were. Yes, I was. So, um, mm -hmm. and I started like journaling and I started just to write you know, at the end of every, every night, I would just start to write how I was feeling and why I was feeling certain things. Cause sometimes you feel things and you don't know why you're feeling things. But then mm -hmm. I think when you start writing, things start, start coming out. And that yeah. was some of the few things that I started to do. Oh, I also work out a lot. And I think working out for me was like top, top three up there because, you know, when you think about how your body creates symptoms, right? It's, it's mm. also, if you're not moving toxins and, 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 are not being released from your body. And mm. I've always been an avid gym goer. So I've always worked out. And mm. when I was, when I started to incorporating working out as an everyday thing, that's when I really start to feel good. It's a mind body thing, right? You start to right. feel better endorphin. You start to feel stronger. I was able to walk. Now I'm running, you know, even at one point in time, my doctor say, no, you need a hip replacement. I say, no, I'm not wow. going for a hip replacement because I'm too young for it, you know? And I didn't want to take on her narrative. I was like, listen, let me let me figure this out on my own and I'll get back to you. I love you know? how your voice just changed then. You're just like, no way. <laughs> yes, it's just, I think- There she is. Yes, yes, you just have to, you know, draw a line in the sand mm. and say, I respect your, your opinion. I respect the information that you're providing to me, but let me figure out this out. Let me just do some research and I'll get back to you. And you're just being <laughs> respectful, you know, just right. saying, okay, you know, let me do my, my, let me just try to figure it out first and I'll get back to you. And that's pretty much what I did. You know, I work out and working out really helped a lot because um, it, it's a stress reducer. And it's so, right. I know. Yeah, it's, and trauma it's, stored in the body as well, right? Yes, so yes. any embodiment that, practice is gonna yes, work. Yeah. So that was like, so working out, was num was definitely on there. I did um, mindfulness practices and like breathing, deep breathing, mm -hmm. meditation. I did for a while, but I just kind of like stopped meditation and I just kind of like just stopped praying more. You know, divine intervention. I started mm -hmm. doing that a lot of that. I started to um, my my diet has gotten so much better that now, um, just to kind of give you a quick 
like rundown of what I did just for those who may need yes. some sort of guidance. Like mm. I, I pretty much, you know, like I drink a lot of smoothies, you know, even to this day, I still do because I think my body is so used to it that if I don't get it, um, it's kind of like, Hey, what, what's going on? Like, feed me some food, you know, <laughs> so green, you know, and I used to drink a lot of green smoothies. I still do today, but I also am very also spontaneous about it too. I just add different things like different fruits and stuff. Mm. Um, I, I try to do my best. I don't avoid processed sugar. And that's been like a killer for me when I eat a lot of sugar. <sighs> Ooh, it's, it, it, within days I start to feel something bad. I remove right. processed sugar, processed foods is another thing. I know it's hard, especially when sometimes life can get busy, but mm. I'm committed. And I think if you're committed, you kind of weigh the option to say, is this worth it or not? You know, and right. I always, you know, I always revert back. I'm not going to go back to that, that symptoms anymore. So, yeah. um, uh, and I pretty much cook from scratch. I love cooking now. You know, I think ever since, you know, the, the pandemic, um, I've been, just, we've, I've been cooking every day it seems like that I just enjoy cooking I just love homemade food you know I yeah and and um so remove inflammatory foods to, for me that is because everyone is different so I tell mm. them you know you got to check with your doctor maybe get like um a food sensitivity test done mm -hmm. yeah, I remove dairy I remove gluten gluten corn and ice very rarely eat um nightshades which are like tomatoes and eggplant and and okay. those types of vegetables, because in the past, I would feel not great after I consumed these nightshades vegetables. I mean, if you're that in tune with your own body, you, you start to notice what sits right and what doesn't, right? And right. you can tune yes. that to whatever yes. that is going on. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So those were the things that I pretty much have implemented and have kept, you know, consistent with, you know, just the making sure that I eat, um, eat for my, eat for health. That's really what it comes down to. You know, just mm. eat for health. It's really that simple, you know, and uh, getting enough rest. That's been a big, thing yeah, huge. Too. Yes. Yes. That was like, I just never thought that I just thought that rest was just a thing when I have a chance, let me go, let me sleep for like a couple hours, but yeah, let me earn that rest yes, first and then yes, I'll take it. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. So true. So now I just, if I have any, any chance I get, I would just kind of like rest not necessarily sleep but just take it easy and get enough yes. sleep you know um and just have fun you know i think you know as we you know what as we get older we just kind of dismiss this idea of just having fun and bringing yeah. play into your life yeah. and it doesn't matter what that looks like everyone everyone idea of fun and play is different like mm. for me it's just like goofing off with my daughter you know and just mm. And just going, uh, taking like a road trip, driving down the street, that's fun. And yeah. fun does, does your body good. And I mean it in Absolutely. a way where, yeah. And I think anyone who's dealing with any type of condition, allow yourself to have fun, mm. you know? Don't get so suck into your, your story and your symptoms. I get it. I used to be there, right? Yeah. And it's amazing because when you start to have fun, you know, you're you're no longer in that that fight or flight you just you're more at ease it's right? very regulating isn't it yes, and it's really interesting very calming for your yeah. nervous system and really now interesting that's what you I, said earlier sorry carry on yeah. no, no no i was gonna say yeah yeah it's just so like it's these little little micro actions that you can take uh you know and that you can that can make you feel better even if it's not a hundred percent even if it's not fifty percent or forty percent but if it's just five percent better that's five percent of a progress that you're making mm. and i tell people don't be so hard on yourself you know it 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 you know for you to have this diagnosis it's taken maybe years for you to get this diagnosis so the symptoms are already showing up maybe years before but we don't know that because you know i guess as humans we just kind of wait until we get a diagnosis and we say oh yeah. i have this now yeah, I'm, I'm doomed for the rest of my life. But right. how about you stop to think for a moment here? If you're experiencing symptoms that are kind of not great or, you know, giving you pain, how about start taking the preventive measure right now instead of waiting to a doctor yeah. say, hey, you got this, you know? It's so but, rare though, isn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, you look, at, you look at the older generation as well and just how many tablets everyone takes and they just take that as like, okay, well, that's my life. I'm just going to live yeah. on tablets forever. I'm not going to do yeah. any exercise. I'm going to eat crap. Yeah. And it's like, well, 
there's a lot more that you can do to right. prevent a lot of this stuff happening and also just make yourself feel better. But just going back as well to that point you were saying about um, about play and about fun and stuff, like I, I certainly resonate with that on the sense of like you get caught up in your story, but also I think like, um, you know, whatever trauma you've had in your life can kind of suck that joy out of your experience like or you you repress joy as much as you repress negative emotion or difficult traumatic emotion you know like you literally you know like an antidepressant or something like that would make a barrier to all types of emotion including joy and and happiness and and fun and all of that so I think that definitely there's an element of that for for people that suffer from this kind of stuff is definitely, you know, either the adverse childhood experiences you were talking about or whatever traumatic experience you have in your life, that joy is almost inaccessible sometimes. So it's, it's definitely a journey to get to that point where you can kind of let that back in or start to really feel that. Yes. And I agree with you a hundred percent because it's, 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 um, it's, it's a lot harder. It's not even a lot harder. It's just, you know, that the neural pathway is not like that. It's blocking that part of you from receiving yeah. joy or because, because now you're that protective mechanism is on like, Oh, you mm. gotta, you, you, it's, 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 let me say this this way. If there are any trauma or any stressful events that you're going through, work with a professional, work with like a therapist, go seek someone who's specialized in this area and work mm-hmm. with them. For me, I work with a functional medicine doctor who's mm. helped me a lot in releasing the trauma. And that's how I've been able to um, get to this point. And a lot of it also has to do with you, you know, taking action on your part as well. You yeah. know, you yeah. can't just rely on the expert or, you know, on what other people are saying. You gotta, us, it, you gotta, it's, it's the sense of I'm in control of my health outcome because i have choices that i can make right now you know in that sense so Mm. um yeah work with someone who's a professional to help you with that but it Mm. is possible you know it's absolutely yeah (laughs) love that so excited for you so where does that like where does that leave you like what's changed now obviously other than your recovery like how is your life different now than it was pre-symptoms let's say has anything else significant changed or I mean other than the fact that you probably seem like a completely different person but yeah I think I am you know I just I'm just more carefree in a sense like you know I don't allow things to get to me anymore like I Mm. used to you know I think um in the past the type of personality that I exhibited was I was this type a high achiever and just kind of like you know, very, yeah, 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 you know, and if things go yeah. th- the way that it, th- it doesn't go the way I want to, I would get upset and, and all that stuff. So I've learned to just be, just live your life to the best that you can um, with the choices that you make. It's all about choices at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, yeah. And how I've been able to get better is because of the choices that I've made along the way, the choices that help promote health and healing, the choices that help me to um, feel better, to allow me to feel joy. And that is to say that um, invest in your well being. You know, mm. I think a lot of, uh, I mean, especially, and I can talk, I can say it for myself, you know, many of us, we just have a priority backward, you know, we right. just put everything else first and then you last like now I, I make sure my cup is full first before I start my morning whatever that may look like like I make sure I I, I say Kintir this is what you need you're going to do this first before you handle other other things you know mm. and that's just how it is and and that's just how kind of how I live my life you know I'm just so grateful I thank God every day I pray um and just this attitude of just being grateful I think that's where that's when you allow yourself to receive joy, receive all these other blessings that are around you, you know? Mm, Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, matching up receiving joy and feeling grateful. I've always struggled a little bit with that, actually. Like, I've always thought, you know, there's all these memes and all these, like, programs that say gratitude journal this and grateful for this and make sure you're grateful every day and it will change your life. And I, I never really resonated with that because I'd never, I guess I'd repressed, probably repressed joy a lot of my life. 
Me too. Or been I, blocked I, from it. You yeah, know? I, I, I agree with you. It took me, honestly, it took me maybe um, just up to two years ago when I started to kind of start to feel, actually feel it in my heart, like feel it in my body, mm. this like gratitude attitude, if you want to call it. Like just mm, this yeah, love that. feeling, yeah, like this feeling of like, wow, I'm actually not just happy because happy in a sense is kind of like, it seems kind of conditional, like kind of like mm. I'd be happy when blah, 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 right? Yeah, now yeah. it's more the sense of like, like joy is just so, so organic in its feeling, right? Joy is like, oh my God, like joy is like a child, right? Yes. And I think because of the great loss I suffer, I think that really, I think that what that really did for me, I think in a sense, it, it just allowed me to see the blessings that's around me. It made me, it I woke me up. I have to agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. it woke me up and so powerfully that I am just, I'm just grateful. I just, <laughs> that's just what it is, you know? And I just- The gratitude it, attitude. Yes, I yes, love that. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, you know, and, you know, don't take life so seriously, you know, because everything in life is a season, right? You know, mm. they, this too shall pass. And that's what I looked at lupus lupus is like past tense for me you know it was yes. an experience that i went through that i made to the other other side and that's why i'm telling you my story so it's just an experience it's just a story a chapter. Just a chapter yeah yes it's not the story i think that's where it is when people start to internalize things that happen to them they make it the story it's right. just a story it's like just it's not okay forever. Yeah, yeah it's not forever this too shall pass so that's how i look at life now like if I'm going through things, I just kind of say, okay, all right. I let it sink in. I feel whatever I'm feeling. Mm. And I say, okay, what do I have to learn from this? Like, you know, why is this in my life? Do I, do I have a role in this, this, this happening? Like, you know, I just mm -hmm. kind of talk myself through it. And then I realize at the end of the day, if it's not my health and it's not my family, I'm good. Let's keep it moving. I love that. I love that. Yeah, but I think uh, this is definitely something that happened to me as well coming through this. It's like you become more of a, a witness of your life rather than like stuck in the middle of this oh, tragic. That's so good. Yes, yes, that Don't is. You think? Yeah. yeah, you kind of become like an observer of like, yeah. wait, yeah, wait, no, I'm not going to go into the story again. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so This powerful. is happening. This is happening, but it's not like I'm not at all of it. It's yes. not just me in it I don't know if I'm articulating that very well no no, no you know it, makes I mean. sense. it makes perfect mm. sense yeah because you're not like really in it like you you're aware of it but you're not in it and you're not consumed by it you know it's right. happening but you're not that's consumed it. by it mm -hmm. and that's just it that's how I look and it, that's a good perspective right and especially mm. with what's going on right now you know we get caught up with things you know like mm. with so many so many it's a lot going on right now <laughs> I, I hear it but I don't consume it Yes. Difference. You can hear it. Same, same, same. Yeah, yeah. Especially the stuff with the pandemic and like all the stuff on the news and all yes. of the Trump stuff and all yes. that shit kicking off over there. Like yeah. you see it, but the, it, again, it's I guess it's a choice, isn't it? Are you are you going to just let yourself be completely consumed by the panic and the fear and the mm. tragedy and the, all mm. of that? Or, I mean, it's a privilege to not be caught up completely in it, obviously, but... Yeah. Can you be a witness to it and not let yourself mm. just get avalanched into it? Absolutely, yeah. Love that. Yes. That's so beautiful. Beautifully said. Yes, I agree 100%. It's so, you know, and that just kind of goes back to when you asked me about, you know, the lupus. Is that is that a mind-body thing? And I mentioned to you that it's also environmental. And environmental mm. also comes from what are you feeding your mind? Who, right, are right. The, who are you letting into your life in terms of people? You know, that's another thing too. Because these things can also induce stress, right? Yeah, it's all toxic, like, isn't it? Yeah. Very toxic, yeah. And mm. I'm very, you know, again, intentional and mindful of who I bring into my life and, and what I put up in my life, you know, so. Beautiful boundaries. Is, yes, yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. I guess I think I'm just, there's one thing, well, you've covered so much brilliant advice already oh, yeah. in your story. But I was wondering whether you might have, um, you know, any kind of really killer or top level advice for people that are suffering, maybe with similar symptoms to what you had, or maybe even people that have been diagnosed with lupus or whatever. Um, you know, what do, what's your what's your best advice to people that are stuck in that storm? 
yeah. thinking that'll never yeah. end. First thing, and that's this is what I did that really helped, and it was a game changer for me, is change what you're eating. You know, when I started to change my diet, I had I experienced up to maybe a almost a 50% symptom relief and symptom relief just in itself. And wow. by changing your diet, you're changing, you know, the biodome, you're changing, you know, the bacteria in your body, you're healing your gut as well. I say, number mm. one, just change what you're eating. I know it's hard because many of us are married to the foods that we love eating, right? Including myself. It's very hard. But, you know, when, once you start taking this, this leap, this step of changing what you're eating, you'll be surprised that everything else just kind of like become a little bit easier to manage. Mm. And then most importantly, um, and this, this goes hand in hand with changing your diet is the mindset. You've got to get your mind right. You've got to like divorce the idea that, you know, this diagnosis is a life sentence. And I tell this to mm. a lot of people I speak with you really, you really, you know, I'm not saying, to, I'm not saying this in a, a disrespectful way. I'm just saying just to, because this is kind of how it usually, this is what happened to me. You know, sometimes doctors can be downers. Sometimes they can yeah. give you the scenario and then think about it it's like it's like a placebo effect right you mm -hmm. have a person of an authority telling you a prognosis that you're going to not make it or you're going to be like this forever you know this is like they believe this is the power of belief right yes make sure everything you, yeah you make sure you surround pe surround yourself with people and sources that are that are 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 um are going to help you get better you know yeah. um you know, the information that you're getting, I'm not saying don't listen to your doctor. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying sure. is whatever information you're getting from them, it's just information. Use it as data to say, you know what? She say that my kidneys aren't doing well. Well, what can I do to get better? At one point in time, I actually went vegan because I thought that would help me with my kidney situation, What it, which it did for like about a year. I changed my diet just to... Mm just to um, make sure I get my kidney up back, back and run, running optimally, you know? So, so in essence, what I'm saying is, you know, take everything as information because really what it is, it's just information. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be very impersonal because no one can predict what's going to happen to you, right? It's For just real. a projection, right? It just, mm. you know, kind of like this is because you are feeling this way today, we're projecting that you might be like this, today, day five, day 10, or, or 10 years from now, you can mm -hmm. change all of that by just what you choose to take in. You can change all that by the choices you make. And I, and I think that's the number one thing. You just have to divorce the idea that it's a life sin. It's not, it's really not. I love that. I love that. It's not at all. And that's something that I carry on just with everything in my life. You know, it's, everything is going to pass, but you have to be an active participant. And I think that's massively. Really that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Be an active participant. It's a big thing, isn't it though? Cause you like relearning that sort of like, yeah. I'm not relying on the doctors to do this for me. I'm not, it's, it's that take your power back kind of thing, yes, you know, that I yeah. really love. Like yeah. this, this whole recovery thing for me is, you know, you learn from different experts and you learn from different modalities. You find what suits you, what works for you, but really it's all on you. It's all your own choices. Absolutely. Like, which yes. is really frightening and uh, a lot, but also like massively empowering once you right. step into that role and really think, okay, well, that we're going to do this. We're not going to be the victim anymore. And we're not going to yeah. have this life sentence hanging over our head. Yes. Yes. It's massively powerful. I agree. Yeah. And um, I just hope that even if a third of my story, even if, if a third of what I'm saying, I hope that can help someone, even if it's just a third, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, massive. Because, you know, it's, it's, I know how it feels to be in that really dark, dark, hopeless place. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not a good feeling, especially when you're supposed to be the one who's taking care of another life, another child, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, for just all the, for the parents out there, you know, if you're dealing with any condition, um, it's not a magic pill where you do something for a few days, you get better. This is no. a marathon. You got to be committed to this lifestyle. Right. You know? And this is what I tell people. You got to be so committed that it becomes second nature. For me, it's second nature. 
you know right. it has to change your life and stay yes. in your life as well yes. like maintaining that level of great mental health and physical health yes. and you know nutrition and all of that it is a big job but mm -hmm. the rewards are I mean they speak for themselves look how, yeah. how great you're like <laughs> absolutely yeah. glowing and happy and like <laughs> what a difference your life has just completely turned around yeah it's um it's amazing. I just want people to know that there it, it is possible. It is. It doesn't matter how bleak your diagnosis looks like. I mean, I had a mini stroke at one point in my life wow. because of the diagnosis. I didn't remember like my husband's name. Like it was just really bad. I mean, for me to turn this all around and to be this well right now, mind and body, it just shows you that it is possible. Yeah. Know? Yeah. That's so, amazing. Don't give up, you know. <laughs> That's what yeah, I tell no, people. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's such a powerful message. Um, have you got anything else that you'd like to add? Or oh, I think you've you've literally covered um, probably every element of my body recovery that I I had on my list to ask you. Anyway, is yeah, there anything I, else that um you want to add? Um, what have you learned about yourself? Here's a good one. What have you learned about yourself in this process? Oh, yeah. Yes, this is what I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to mention that you don't have to do everything on your own. Yeah. You no, know, that is such so big for me. <laughs> That's That's massive. I, massive. And that takes yeah. off the pressure, the weight of the world. Like you don't need to do everything by yourself. Who told lean, us that in the yeah, first place? Right. Like, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Like lean into the system. What are we thinking? System. Yeah, right. Oh my totally. gosh. I was just like, I wasn't receptive to any of those, the, the, Same. any of this. It's just crazy. So I think that's the thing. I think that's also another big thing too, where lean into it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you have the support system, ask for help. It doesn't make you weaker. It makes you stronger. It makes you a leader because a leader knows when to ask for assistance or knows how to, to, to out, to do, to say, Hey, I, I can't do this. Can you do this for me? You know? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been really learning now training my mind now to say oh my gosh okay i can't do this today i can't do the dishes and cook and do all this because i had mm. a long day at work so i'm gonna tell hubby to, to finish up for me you know i'm willing i'm surrendering surrender surrender, surrender. Oh, so beautiful renders everything yeah yes, agreed yes and that's that's kind of my last final thought surrender i you love know? that i love that <laughs> There should be this light should just come over the screen now. Yeah. Maybe I'll edit something in. <laughs> right. Yes, yes, there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. It's, I mean, um, you've got, what a brilliant, brilliant episode this is. is I'm so happy um, that we finally got together and, yes. and did this because it's massively inspiring. I mean, just for the simple yeah. fact that we're going to put something live out there that is, right. you know, lupus is basically not a life sentence and no. you know that it is basically mind body yeah it is so much so it's going to help so many people so much because now you become more aware now you're like aware of how you're reacting you know like your mm. emotional response yes. and that in itself is you know when i mentioned earlier in our uh, conversation about the science of epigenetics mm -hmm. that's really what it is you know Mm -hmm. You know, your emotional reaction to your environmental stressors can downgrade or upregulate your genes, you know, to turn into disease or set or, or, or symptoms, you know? So yeah. for me, just understanding, just wrapping my head around this premise is like, wait, really? Okay. It makes total sense though, doesn't it as well? Yeah. Like, of course it would. Why wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. And, but we don't think about that. We don't realize how no. much our, our mindset, you know, our perception influences our health health mm. you know we don't realize that mm. and i try to tell people that i'm like what your mindset it's like kind of a, a, a like a a foreign thing to them say no yeah, it's it sounds connected. like complete yeah. bullshit yeah <laughs> right yeah. yeah yeah so um yeah so you got this i think people who are going through it, you got it you just have to be an, an active participant you just have to take ownership of your this this health that you're going through and say you know what i'm going to make a change and you just have to make that decision once mm. you make that decision everything will follow through the actions will start to show you just, just start taking action naturally because you make that decision and a lot of mm -hmm. people are not there because they're stuck in between their stories yeah exactly they don't want exactly. to make the decision and i tell people make a, a, a damn decision once you make the decision you it's kind of like you make this promise to yourself so now you have like 
you have no choice but to just follow through in a sense, right? Mm. Unless you want to break your integrity, but you just follow mm-hmm. through. You want to follow through, right? So I say just make a decision. And also, like, I've been talking to um, Dan Ratner a bit about this and some other people in my group as well about, like, how you um, and choices you mentioned before, like, it's really, it changes everything. It changes everything for me. I've been practicing this quite a lot recently. Like when confronted with a situation or, the, or a choice, whatever, a decision needs to be made. And it can be something really simple. Like, am I going to write this letter today or am I not? Am I going to like put it off again or whatever? Yeah. Um, like, what is the powerful move right now? What is the choice that I make right now that is the more powerful choice? Yeah. And not only is that going to leave you and lead you in a better direction for whatever that is, but also yeah. it makes you feel like in control and empowered. Yeah. And that for me, it has been like enormous in terms of like regulating mm. whether or not I get a mind body symptom or whether or not I have an anxiety flare or whether or not I feel like just feel like shit of like, yeah. oh, God, I've not done that thing again. You yeah. know? You know, you make a, a very good point because when you think about anxiety, why do you, why do people have anxiety? Usually anxiety for me is when I just put off things, when I don't want to face it yeah, or when I yeah. think the worst case scenario or something. And mm. you usually think the worst case scenario is something when you don't want to face it, right? So how do you kind of dissolve the anxiety? You face it and you make a decision. You figure out yes. what are your options, right? And that's how I just kind of deal with thing. I don't even say I deal with anxiety because now I just feel like I just work it out. Like if I get stressed, I just go work out, you know, and that's <laughs> my remedy for, for many things, you know? So, yeah. um, but that's just it. This, the power of decision is just so underestimated. A lot of totally. people just sit on the decisions and it's kind of like an open browser. You have like a million browser up in your head, <laughs> right? Because you, you haven't yeah. made any decision. So just make a decision so you can exit out and, and get out of that, that, that and decision. And then it's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It is. It is. You're right. I think anxiety is certainly like that for me as well. It's almost like if I've got loads of stuff pending in my inbox that I just yes. haven't read or done, yes. it's like someone standing behind me with a yes. knife. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Make a decision and, and move on and exit out and move on. You know? Yeah, or just delete it. Whatever. Yeah. Like, make, yeah. it, make a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes we don't want to make a decision because we don't want to take action. We're resisting that we would have to take action, you know? And I think that's like a big sign for you to take the action, you know? It's an alarm bell going, yes. do it. Yes. Yeah, yes. Just do it. That's yeah, what anxiety is really, isn't yes. it? It's that bubbling yes. of like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you're avoiding what you're resisting mm. and you should just do it. Like, and then that's it'll right. just, it just goes away, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Mm. Well, I think this is an absolutely jam-packed episode i'm so um happy that we did this kinthia thank yes, you so much yes, for taking the time to come and uh, to come and chat with me um are you open to have people like drop questions to you and stuff oh, like yeah. that if that's okay so yes. when i post this i'll tag you and um then if anybody has any questions for you directly then they can reach absolutely. out to you in the comments I, is that all right yes i'm an open book but yes please thank you I love that. Oh, thank you yes. so much again. Thank you. And it was a pleasure. I had a good time. Thank you for me too. having me on your platform. Uh, your that's story. okay. Thank you so yes. much. Keep in touch. And yes. um, yeah, it was lovely to see you and lovely to meet you finally. Yes, definitely. Same here. Thank you, my love. Yes. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Wow, that's jam packed. So, lupus is TMS. Who knew? Um, well, you probably did. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've seen it in various places, but I never have heard from anyone directly. So there's so much crossover in so many of these stories. Like it still blows my mind, but I love getting different perspectives and I love the nutrition p- part of her story as well. And just how important being healthy in general in your own body and making those healthy choices can just change. It can just put you on a different path of healing rather than kind of being stuck. You know, you have your own choices that you can make about your own body and it is all you're within your own power. Like all of this work is unfortunately on your back. So yeah, I love that conversation. I hope you got something out of this and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will tag Kinthia obviously in this uh, post. Whenever you see this, there'll be all of the links to the resources that we spoke about in the comments below or in the description in YouTube, if that's where you're watching it, or if you're watching this on mytmsjourney.com, 
then all of the information about her will be in the article below. Um, yeah, that's all for now. I hope to see you soon. Again, thanks for watching and check out some of the other episodes that are on here for your stories. There's plenty of other inspiration on mind body issues here. Um, if you want to get involved, you would like to share some of your story, even if you're not completely recovered or you've had some breakthroughs or milestone moments that you'd like to share, just reach out to me on social media or via my website, mightymsjourney.com. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.